Okay. <clears throat> All right, the urinary, syst urinary system anatomy. What is it and what does it do? All right, this is uh, <clears throat> not fancy uh, PowerPoint here for you. This is just sort of your notes with the blanks filled in. So we'll go from, we'll go from here. So what is it and what does it do? Every living organism <clears throat> produces waste that it needs to remove from the body. The urinary system is how the body removes the waste that it generates from each cell. This is different than the waste that is produced from the digestive system. The waste from the digestive system is the leftover stuff that could not be digested and absorbed from the food that we eat. Okay, So we know that we talked about the intestines and the digestive system recently. Uh, anything that ends up, you know, your feces that, that goes into your, um, your large intestine there, that's the stuff that your body couldn't really use. It squeezed everything out of it that it could, and now the waste gets uh, left over. The urinary system um, is a little bit different, okay? So the waste that the urinary system removes is the waste that results from the running and operating of the cells and all the other systems in the human body. Next page, here we go. We mentioned in our systems, um, in other systems, organs that filter things. So the liver filters out toxins that are in the blood and breaks them down. The spleen filters out old blood cells and breaks them down. In both cases, they are broken down. But where do the broken down pieces go? That's where the urinary system comes in. The urinary system filters out the broken pieces also known as urea, and excretes them in your urine. <clears throat> so, I mean, in a, in a sense, your urinary system does take out some of the waste from the food that you don't eat, but largely the food waste uh, gets expelled through the digestive system. The, the uh, waste from your organs that are dealing with all of the things that your food brings into your body. Um, that's, that's what the urinary system is. So filters, um, so the liver toxins, the spleen old blood cells, the urinary system takes that all the way. The urinary system is composed of two main organs, the kidneys and the urinary bladder. So the kidneys and the bladder. There are other smaller components like tubules and things, but kidneys and the bladder are the two most important. You have two kidneys. They're located mid-back behind your digestive system. Each one is shaped exactly like a kidney bean. That's why the beans are called kidney beans, I guess. But they're not small like kidney beans. They're each about the size of your fist. So we saw in the previous video, they're uh, just back behind a little bit where your stomach and intestines are. They're back just a little bit behind that and about, about this big, about as big as your fist. The kidney is really an advanced filter. The filter part is called a nephron, a nephron. Each kidney is composed of more than one million urine-forming nephrons that are located in the renal cortex and renal medulla. So we just watched this video crash course. Uh, this is on the uh, website that you will find. And let me just see if I can spot it for you there. So the urinary system, if you, I got to it's right here. I've, I've renamed it now, but um, yeah, it's right here, the video, if you want to watch that. So we did talk about the nephrons in that video there. The long sort of like double back, the long tubes that uh, brings things out and in as well. So that's the advanced filter part. Each kidney is composed, uh, oh, I read that already. The, so the renal cortex and the medulla are different parts of uh, the kidney where the nephrons are. Each nephron is composed of a glomerulus, glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, and a tubule, G-L-O-M-E-R-U-L-U-S, glomerulus. What's that mean? Glomerulus. 
Yes. That's just a component of the nephron. It's part of the nephron. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's see if we can find this on here. Um, So here's the medulla, these kind of, uh, I guess, the kind of spaces in here. Um, okay, so I got a little diagram up here. You don't have this in your notes, but um, you just, we did see it on the video. So the glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, and the tubule. So that's inside the nephron, so it's deep inside the kidney. Here's the glomerulus, it's that ball of yarn, remember, um, where the name came from. The Bowman's capsule surrounds that, the proximal tubule uh, comes out of there. So that's deep inside here. And there's a bunch of loops, right? The PCT is the first loop, then the big, um, big loop there, and then it finishes off. So the three main parts of the nephron is the glomerulus, Bowman's capsule, and the tubule. So that's, that's right here, okay? Uh, and I, I believe there's a pretty good diagram of that in your textbook, page 178. Okay, let's keep going with the notes. Okay, the way the nephron works is what makes the kidneys function. The way the nephron works, okay, next blank. Nephron. There's a lot more detail to it, but on a very simple level, the nephron has four important parts that each do something. So the glomerulus, this is a mesh of capillaries that allows everything smaller than red blood cells and larger proteins to leak out of your blood. It's like a sieve in this way. You guys know what a sieve is? It's like a strainer. It's an old, I think that's an old word for a strainer. I don't know. It's a sieve. S-I-E-V-E, -E, like a strainer. Okay, so it, it has just enough space for... Um, larger proteins to leak out. The Bowman's capsule, this is a balloon-like sac that surrounds the glomerulus, catching everything it filters out and sending it down the tube. So... Here's that picture again. The glomerulus the Bowman's capsule, so it surrounds it, and then it sends it down uh, the tube, down the way there. Bowman's capsule. The tubule, after the ca capillaries filter everything out, it will need to reabsorb everything good that the blood needs back into itself. To do this, the capillaries wrap around the tubule and reabsorb different things along the length of it before it deposits its filtrate at the end into the collecting duct that takes the filtrate to the bladder as urine. So I'm going to read that one more time. There's a lot in there. So after the capillaries filter everything out, it will need to reabsorb all the good stuff that the blood needs back. To do this, the capillaries wrap around the tubule and reabsorb different things along the length of it before it deposits its filtrate into uh, the collecting duct that takes the filtrate to the bladder. So there's a lot of things that kind of leave at certain points and then come back in at other points. So it's a pretty complex filtration system, really. So you've got the glomerulus, the ball of yarn in there, and there's a lot of stuff that comes out of there, gets collected, things leave, and then things come back in uh, to send the urine down into the bladder. All right, the proximal tubule. This is the first part of the tubule where the reabsorption of vitamins, amino acids, and glucoses take place. Glucose. Uh, and that's the PCT from the video, the first, the first tube. The loop of Henle, this is the second part of the loop. This is where the body reabsorbs much of the water that was lost during the filtering. Mammals that live where there is lots of fresh water have short loops. They absorb very little. Mammals that live 
where there is less fresh water have very long loops to absorb a lot. Interesting. And if we plot, post this diagram in here again. So I don't think it's mentioned here, but this is the loop of Henley here, this big long loop here. Okay, the big long loop. Uh, the distal tube, this part comes last. It's where the calcium and sodium, the salts, are reabsorbed into the blood. So let's see if I can get this up here a little bit. Uh, let me make this a bit smaller. Hang on. So you have the glomerulus here. Uh, the first part is the PCL. And then you have Henley's loop of Henley there. And then you have the, the distal tube. So there's the kind of the main part there where lots of stuff gets filtered out then it goes through the first part of the tube the next part of the tube reabsorbs some things and so on and then it has everything filtered and it's just the right kind of concentration of everything and uh, you've got urine going one way your blood going back the other way so you see these these um, blood vessels and capillaries that are wrapped around this loop it's there's an exchange basically there the good stuff stays the bad stuff continues along into the urine on a large scale level, anyways. Any questions so far? Pretty technical. Um, you're going to study this more in, in Bio 30, so when you get to biology. Uh, and certainly, if you want to do anything medical, you'll, you'll get a chance to focus on um, some more of this anatomy. Uh, but this is a good intro. Yeah, question? So, if, you, if it said that um, mammals have like some of long and some of short, is there like much of a variety? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I, I, not as far as I know. Uh, is the loop of Henley longer or shorter in different humans? I don't think so. I, I, I don't know, but I don't think so. Um, some, some animals would, would uh, the makeup would be different, they said, according to, um, according to the environments they live in. But I don't think it's much different for humans. Okay, the collecting tubule, have you read this one yet? This is where the filtrate flows down to the renal pelvis of the kidneys to be sent to the bladder through the ureters. It's also where a lot of water is reabsorbed and the urine concentrates. Okay, so uh, I guess here's, do you guys have this in your notes now? Oh, you do, you do have one on the next page, okay. So this has a little bit of everything in there too, I guess. Uh, I could have just maybe tried to use this one. Um, yeah, I could move this one. So there's a good picture too. Um, the glomerulus, um, Bowman's capsule surrounding it, uh, the proximal tube. That's the first little bit of the tube. Um, the Henley's loop, loop of Henley there, and then back up to the distal part. And uh, the collecting tube here is this big long kind of tree-like thing there. And you have a little bit more detail on that diagram, too, that you can study, so. Question, yeah? Um, what would be testing on, like, knowing uh, the diagram and, like, seeing the Ah, uh, you might, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, obviously, you're going you're gonna to stick to the uh, terms that are in the notes. Uh, not everything that's in here, I'll, like, I, I'm not going to give you this diagram and tell you to fill in every little space, but um, the important things you'll be able to have to identify. So, that you've got this one in your notes, and you've got a little slightly different one in your textbook. So, yeah, I can study that. And you can look at that, uh, you can watch that um, uh, video again. Were there, were there spaces for this diagram that you're filling in? Okay, take a minute. Oh, none of it is? The diagram allows us to kind of place all this stuff here because this part right here, right, is actually all inside sort of this square. And this little square is all inside in here. So there's many sections of this. So you kind of zoom, zoom in a little bit there. Um, that's kind of the placement of everything. So the ureter would be the main um, discharge tube, and there's uh, the collecting tubules come from sort of each of these little sections. Okay. Yeah. So I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't worry about uh, all of these little terms on this diagram so much. The ones in the notes you should focus on only. But it's good to spend some time 
um, going over this kind of stuff. Now I feel like there was something here too, but that's not on this. So don't worry about this little spot right there. Uh, later. All right, the urinary bladder. Okay, so once everything gets filtered out of the kidneys and sends to the bladder, the urinary bladder is located in the pelvis and can hold up to 400 to 600 milliliters of urine. So that's uh, about half a liter, around half a liter. 500 mils would be about half a liter. It is a muscular sac that's kind of shaped like an upside down pear. Okay, your bladder. It receives urine from the kidneys through the ureters. It releases urine out of the body through the urethra. So the, the ureters uh, bring urine from the kidneys and the urethra takes it out of the bladder When the bladder is full, a nerve that measures the stretch in the bladder wall sends a signal to the brain that you need to urinate. So literally when your bladder stretches to a certain point, it signals your brain that, hey, uh, gotta, gotta go to the bathroom, gotta release this here. And uh, I'm sure some, some people have a higher tolerance. Your, the switch turns on a little bit before, a little bit after. Your bladder stretched right now? Okay, well, you can see how long it'll stretch. Uh, you've already been waiting for a while? I know all this talk about urine, hey? Well, let me just see. Let's, uh, let's, let's fill in a couple, couple so yeah, let's fill in a section here. <laughs> okay, wait, was there, uh, was this, is that, is that the last bit of that section? You know your bladder. Okay, so all right. Okay, um, go whatever you need to go. I guess just do it quick. Uh, okay, guys, sh sh kidney disease, chronic, chronic kidney disease. This is typically caused by high blood pressure. The pressure damages the vessels to the point that the kidneys cannot function anymore. So it's from high blood pressure, damages the vessels in the kidneys. This can also be caused by too much sugar as a result of diabetes. Again, the vessels become damaged and the kidneys do not function as well as they should. Um, yeah, so have you guys ever heard of dialysis, kidney dialysis? Yeah, it's where a machine has to do all the filtering instead of your your kidneys, if your kidneys are not uh, functioning. So people that are on dialysis have to get their, yeah, basically think about how many times you have to go to the bathroom in a day. Um, you know, uh, that's quite often, right? Your, your kidneys are working all the time. So people with kidney disease um, often have to get uh, their blood filtered quite often, daily for sure. That would be not good. That's right. That's right. It just, uh, you, it just change the, all the blood in the body. Yeah. Put it yeah, it's a tough one. All right, kidney stones. Kidney stones. This is when minerals and other substances in the blood crystallize. If you've ever, you guys probably never had kidney stones, but if you know of people, usually in older older people, this happens. And... Um, yeah, when, when you're, the waste, the mineral uh, stuff is, is not able to be passed out in dissolved liquid form, if it starts to crystallize somewhere in your kidneys or uh, in the system somewhere, a lot of times this is called kidney stones and they form hard, lots of times little jagged, um, uh, like jagged sort of rot, like pebbles, and they have to pass through... Um, your urinary system and the tubes are pretty small and it's pretty painful. Yeah? Would drinking a bunch of water just kind of prevent the formation? Um, yeah, so drinking water and um, making sure your body has, I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly what totally prevents them, but yes, drinking lots of water 
And um, there are things that help the, the health of your urinary system, different fruit juices and things like that. So uh, also I think people take medication and things like that to, to help yeah. dissolve, to prevent the crystallization. Let me just finish this here though. So the minerals crystallize in the kidneys and form solid masses or stones. These typically do not cause long-term damage, but passing them is often extremely painful. Um, so yeah, I've known older people that that's happened to, and uh, it's not fun at all. So um, it's very painful. Oh, let me see if I got anything underneath this. Nope, that's good. Okay. Um, okay, here's one for you: glomerular nef nephritis, glomerular nephritis. So glomerulus. And then nephron, so combine those, glomerulonephritis, nephritis. That's <laughs> uh, a tough one. This is when the glomerulus is infected. It's typically, it typically gets better on its own. Antibiotics may speed this up. So if you've got a uh, kidney infection, could be this, and um, antibiotics might help. But you can tell, you, can, you know, when things get infected, they get swollen and uh, difficult for these fine little tubules to uh, operate if things are swollen and infected and, yeah, it can be trouble. All right, um, polycystic kidney disease, polycystic kidney disease. This is when there are multiple cysts on or in your kidneys. As a result, they do not function properly. So cysts would be just like growths. Um, and yeah, so again, this fine-tuned filtering system is easily affected. Okay. Uh, we'll pick up the last little part tomorrow. This is where we'll pick her up. Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> what did you just yell? Hang around, guys. Thank you. Okay.